Hello. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ur Kainar. I'm a student at Boston University. So today I'm going to talk about a hybrid cloud storage project that we have uh, with uh, my collaborators. You can see them here. Um, so in our own data center, um, we didn't have a full bisection bandwidth, and we have a tremendous amount of data reuse. So we built a cache called D3N and um, for a single data center. And the basic idea behind the D3N is it's um, caching the data on the access side of network bottlenecks. Um, so with this design, we put a dedicated um, rack local cache servers. And D3N is a multi-layer cache, um, stores the data on local racks, and we locate the object on higher, or data on the higher la layers using consistent hashing. So unlike the other solutions out there, like Alexio, D3N is not just a cache for a cluster, it's a cache for entire data center, and it's an extension um, to the existing data lake. So we put all the things inside the Ceph's uh, Rados gateway, and the code is upstream by the Red Hat engineers. So we run a lot of different experiments, and you can, we can discuss them offline, or you can find some of them in our uh, paper. But overall, um, our results show that uh, the D3N um, imposes a minimum overhead, improves the performance of workload um, significantly, and reduces the uh, load on the data center network and access to the original data lake. So all our work so far, uh, including the D3N, is focused for a single um, data center. But now we want to take our work and extend it for a hybrid cloud use case. So the values offered by public cloud services are very clear for um, many um, workloads. However, today many companies still would like to store their data in their private data center due to the different reason like cost or security. Um, for instance, Two Sigma, a financial hedge fund, use spot instances um, to run their analytic workloads. And uh, they create cluster in multiple um, different regions. And however, due to the security issues, they want to keep their data sets in their private data lake. Um, and because of the current asymmetric network, network prices, um, companies like Two Sigma today has a strong incentive to, uh, for on-premise storage and store um, or cache the data local um, in their um, region. So if you want to take our like, initial work, D3N, and want to extend it for hybrid cloud, cloud use case, um, we need to, um, what needs to be changed? So D3N uh, initially designed for uh, read-only data sets and for um, intermediate data sets, but now we want to um, cache the data on the other side of the wide area networks, so therefore we need a durable write-back cache. Um, we were like locating um, data using consistent hashing because it was simple, uh, uh, doesn't require any protocol changes, uh, but now we have a write-back cache, we wanna make sure, uh, we wanna make sure and know where is the data is uh, located, therefore we need a directory uh, to store the data and prevent any data loss. So in the data center, we have a fixed network topology, therefore uh, we were using any cache-based um, any cache based uh, lookup service to locate the cache services. But now when we are in the cloud, we don't have any network, we don't have any topology, and um, now we are using Kubernetes to um, locate the caches in, in the public cloud. And also we were like using an internal Ceph protocol called Rados uh, between the communication uh, between the cache and the original data lake. Now we wanna make this um, cache solution more generable and we want to support multiple uh, different data lakes. Uh, therefore, we are using now S3 protocol when we access the data lake. So in here you see our um, implement design and implementation uh, for a replicated and durable uh, write-back cache. So instead of like implementing this cache from scratch, uh, we are using the existing Ceph code and basically we are like sending up a local OSD uh, cluster as a cache in the public cloud region. And we also put a Redis, which is gonna be our, which is our uh, directory and store the information about like objects, blocks, their location, um, how many times they access, and also other information like 
the uh, about the cache um, servers itself, like how many, what is the request load on them, um, what are they, what is their hit rate. So this implementation uh, will be ready by um, by the Red Hat Summit, which is uh, coming up this April, and um, will be part of the um, keynote. So. This design and implementation uh, will allow us to do now all this interesting um, research. Um, so first of all, uh, we will have we, will, we now have a directory which is going to provide us a global view of the cache. Uh, so we want to provide a platform for for researchers um, to use the directory and explore a different cache management and uh, algorithm um, and policies. Um, we also don't want to uh, build a cache for a single data lake, uh, but we want to uh, support multiple data lakes. Um, for instance, um, open storage network deploy a bunch of different bunch of uh, data lake pods all around the world, or uh, all around the country. And one of the problem they're uh, having faces is like their client has to tell which data lake or which backend they want to store their data sets. So can we? Automate this. Can we um, can we uh, place the data on behalf of the user um, automatically in um, the right data lake? We also want to look at erasure coding. We want to explore erasure coding in the caching and uh, to reduce the redundancy uh, because not all the data sets require the same redundancy. Um, the other interesting thing we want to do is. Um, now, if we know, for example, we have like multiple regions here, as you see, region one and region, let's say, two, and you know that someone already bring the data in region one, and now you want to uh, process the same data. So uh, if, if you know the data is stored in region one, then um, can we also, you know, um, can we also uh, bring up a cluster in region one, which is going to process that data? Um, and similarly, for example, you're going to decide to um, use some spot instances in uh, region one, and then you know which data set that you're going to work on, so can we prefetch that da data before um, your computation starts? So as I say, there are like a bunch of different uh, research opportunities now, um, and these are the some of them we are interested in it. Um, so you can uh, find the code, uh, the upstream code, online, and we also have um, web pages if you want to uh, learn more about the project. Um, I believe that's all. <laughs> Thank you.